Welcome to Deep Tooth Academy. It's another time in which we want to look at some further questions on circuit geometry. And since our focus had been on year 2016, again, we'll be continuing with it that year. But today, we'll be looking at the questions in the core paper, paper two, the theory paper of the, of the, of the year 2016. And we have two questions, one in the compulsory section, the other one in the optional section. But before we forge ahead, again, we want to lay the emphasis on the fact that having an understanding of the core principles that are guiding circuit geometry problems is going to seriously help us in handling our question. And so if you have not seen the video, kindly go ahead. It's only about 10 minutes. Take your time. Look at the video. Understand the concepts and know how we can apply the concepts in any of the questions that we have. So yeah. So this is the first of the question, and there are actually two ways that we can use to solve the question. And the first option is to look at the Hangul RTS that we are giving as 28. You notice that it's going to be the Hangul SRQ, and what is the reason for that? Because the Hangul that is in the alternate segment of the tangent and the chord. The chord and the tangent makes an angle of 28 degrees, which is also the angle in the hotamic segment of the circle. And having an understanding of that, we have angle MRV has been given to us as 46 degrees. And we have just found angle SRQ to be 28 degrees. But angle on a straight line, the straight line MRQ, all of them will sum up to 180 degrees. And now we can find the angle in the midpoint, angle VRS, and substituting for the value of MRV and SRQ, we can find VRS to just be 180 minus the sum of the two. And that is going to give us 180 minus 46 plus 28. That's going to give us 106 degree. Now, looking at this, we can further note that angle VRS that we just find plus the angle we are looking for X the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral. And we know that opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. And um, don't mind my language of we know that, we know that, we know that. It's riding on the fact that you have watched the video on the principles of cyclic geometry, the angle properties of circle, and the tangent properties. If you have not, go and watch it and have an understanding so that we can be on the page, same page. So this will solve and give us 46 degrees. Now, the other option is to introduce another line in this diagram and even introduce a line R view from the point in which the tangent is intersecting the circle, we are going to notice that this angle VUR is also going to be 46 and angle RUS is also going to be 28. And why? Because for the first for the first case, angle MVR and angle VUR are going to be equal because they are angle in alternate segments. Looking at the tangent and the chord, they make an angle 46 degree. An angle in the alternate segment to such a chord and a tangent is also 46 degree. And then on the other side, looking at angle RUS and angle RTS, they are going to be the same because they are angles in the same segment of the circle. Now that was quite interesting. Because our understanding of our principles just gave us a wonderful solution to our question, and this is as simple as it comes. Then we can now understand that angle VUS, which we are asked to find, is the sum of angle VUR and RUS that we just find out, and that's also going to give us 74. Those are two ways that we can solve the question, but without understanding the principles, there's no way we can go ahead on it. Now, the core question again, question 7B, which is optional, but we can expect that this is going to be much more tougher than what we just looked at. But again, first and foremost, what we need to look at is that what are our observations from this particular diagram? Looking at this diagram, we're asked to find angle SQT and PQT by giving some parameters. RS is parallel to QT. QR is the same in length with RS. And angle QTS is 52 degrees. First, we have a circle quadrilateral PQRS. And okay, let me draw that out for us. PQRS. 
that's exactly quadrilateral. And remember, opposite angles of exactly quadrilateral are supplementary. They add up to 180. Again, you can see there's an isosceles triangle QRS with two sides that are equal being drawn in yellow. Line QR and RS are equal. We should also note that. And then further than that, we are given that there are two lines that are parallel to each other. Two lines that are parallel to each other. Um, line RS and line QT are parallel lines. And there are some properties that are peculiar to parallel lines, especially when a line is being drawn across the two parallel lines. These are the guiding principles that will help us to solve these questions and find solutions to SQT and PQT. So, moving from our observations, what can we say on this particular diagram? I want you to pause. I want you to attempt this question yourself. Don't wait for the solution. Pause the video right now. Go ahead, try and solve it, and then come back and let's compare our solution together. Now, um, I hope you have done that because I'm going ahead with my solution now. Angle QPS and angle QTS are going to be equal because the angles in the same segment. So, angle QPS we have also found to be 52 degrees because it's in the same segment with angle QTS. And then looking at our cyclic quadrilateral, we can find angle QRS because that is the angle that is vertically opposite angle QPS. So, QPS and QRS will add up to 180 degrees because they are angles that are vertically opposite each other in a cyclic quadrilateral. Solving for QRS, we can just subtract the value of QPS, which is 52 degrees, from QRS, and that will give us 128 degrees. So we have that as 1, 128 degrees. Now, moving on to our isosceles triangle QRS, we can see that the isosceles triangles are two sides equal, and that ensures that the base angles are also going to be equal. So, from the triangle QRS, we can see that angle, the angle that we just obtained, angle QRS plus angle, the other two angles, which are going to be the same because they are base angles, let's say plus 2x, yes, we can say plus 2x, is going to give us 180 degrees. And that is the sum of angles of an isosceles triangle. 2x because they are base angles of isosceles um, triangle. And easily we can solve for our hex by solving that question. Since we know the, the value of angle QRS, so x is going to give us 52 over 2, and that is 26 degree. So we have 26 degree. And now we can move on to talk about our parallel lines, RS being parallel to QT. But we also have line QS um, running across the two parallel lines. And of course, um, since line QS is running across there, we can see that angle SQT, which is one of the requirements we are asked to find out, is also going to be S, and that is going to give us 26 degree because they are alternate angles. S, Q, T, and R, S, Q, they are alternate angles. So we have found our S, Q, T to be other than Now, furthermore, since O is the center of the circle, we know that angle P, Q, S is going to give us angle 90 degree. And why? Because one of our theorems is explaining to us that angle by diameter that is subtended at the circumference by the diameter is always 180 degree. It's, it's always 90 degree. The angle of the diameter will be 180. Half of that, which is at the circumference, will be 90. Now, looking at PQS, we know that PQS is made of two angles, PQT and SQT. So, PQS, which you know is 90, is made of PQT and SQT. And SQT we have found to be S already. PQS we have found to be 90. So we can solve for the other angle PQT um, and putting the angle of SQT, which is 26 that we have gotten, we can find our PQT is 90 minus 26. And that is going to give us 64. And you can see we have solved for the problems we are asked to solve for. And that is all there is to it. But again, I cannot overemphasize 
the principle of understanding the guidelines of what we are doing here. You need to know the properties of your circle. You need to be able to look and see and observe and know which of the theorems we need to apply. Here we are looking at um, a cyclic quadrilateral. We are looking at an isosceles triangle. We are looking at alternate angles. So that's what we are going to be doing today. It's Div2 Academy. Um, if you like the video, share, like, subscribe, and until next time, God bless you.